Hello everyone. Do, have you seen these gorgeous PCs behind me? I am at CES 2023 and as you know, PC building is kind of my thing. I'm very easily distracted by shiny RGB PCs and coming in here especially to thermal take setup. I just wanted to see what new hotness might be available for my next build. And here to help walk us through everything that's going on is my good friend Mike. Mike, come on in here. Hey, hey, hey. What's up everybody? Hi. How's your CES been so far? You know, CES has been great. I, I couldn't be more excited to see you and everybody else in an offline event. Oh my God. I know, I feel like I probably get more excited about tech conventions than most people, but legitimately, this is where we get to see the products of the future, the products that are coming down the line. I know a lot of people tend to watch my CES coverage and say, thanks for showing me all the things I'll never be able to afford that won't come out for five years. But that is not the case here for Thermal Take. Some of not. what we're gonna look out today is already on the market. Mm -hmm. and some of it is coming very soon. So, Absolutely. So without any further ado, Mike, let's see what we got. All right, now the Tower 200 immediately caught my eye because I am considering a small form factor PC for my next build, being that I have a two PC streaming setup. Mm -hmm. You know, having two full-size or mid-size towers on your desktop takes up a lot of space. Awesome. Now, something like this that can hold a beefy 40 series card maybe, but still looks nice and sleek and has a smaller footprint, definitely draws my eye. Tell us about the Tower 200. So we're really excited. I, I love the Tower series just on a personal level, but being able to take it to the next level with the Tower 100 doing mini ITX, we have the Tower 200 here offering a micro ATX. So we're just covering more options for you, going a little bit bigger, giving you a little bit more and a nice fun little box. Yeah, and I love that you can do the vertical mount for the 40 series here um, because a lot of people are worried and I know my only, I've only done one build so far with a 40 series card, but I am so worried about the strain on that PCIe slot. No joke, this is a little crass, but I feel like the 40 series cards are about the size that my son was when he came out of my body originally. So they're, they're very, they're very sizable. So being able to do a vertical mount, take some of that pressure off and just look how clean and beautiful this looks, even though it's small form factor, I'm into it. With the case itself, when you see it's also nice and convenient. A lot of the panels just pop right off just like that. And you can see all that card right there. All right, now the Series 500 panel kit is already drawing my attention because it has this little bracket for the card, which is awesome. But it seems like it's highly customizable. Is that correct? Absolutely. You have some nice advantages here with a mid-tower case. It gives some good cooling options too with being able to fit a 360 or 420 radiator in the case itself. One of the things that we have done is though, we've perforated the power cover. It gives a nice little benefit for pass-through airflow. We also offer vertical mounting options too for the graphics card. So you can turn that go vertical with an optional riser cable sold separately. And who would you say this case is meant for? Is this meant more for your first time builders, your kind of mid-level builders, or everyone in between? I would definitely say this is a good first time builder case or somebody that's even seasoned that wants a nice solid mid-tower AIO type of cooling case. That has very nice airflow. And a good amount of room for the graphics card. I mean, this is yeah. a 40 series card in here and we all like wiggle room, don't we? Everyone loves some wiggle room. Now we're looking at the CTE cases. We've got the 700, the 750, and the T500 as well. And Mike, what I'd love for you to explain to folks is what is the whole kind of CTE story and philosophy from an airflow standpoint? Because it's a little different than a lot of first time or early builders might be used to. One of the big directions we're going here with the centralized thermal efficiency is we want to move the CPU's location inside the case. Whoop. Everybody's used to it being <laughs> in that upper left corner. Yep. And by rotating the motherboard and offering vertical mounting for the graphics card at the same time, this puts the CPU more centralized into the case. And as you can see, there's plenty of airflow options as we've offered up to four different locations for up to triple 140 mounting. So you can see here, uh, you know, the motherboard is going this way. We've got the vertical mount GPU over here in the CPU, like Mike said, right here 
here in the center. When it comes to the CTE C700, the CTE C750, um, and the CTE T500, is the major difference there the sizing we have for our fans and the amount of fans that come with the case? Desk real estate we know is important for everyone. Yes. So, and we also know a lot of people like to go big. So us at Thermal Take, our big thing is options. And a lot of this is all about giving you guys more options. So from the 750 down to the 700, we shrink it down a little bit, you know, as far as options wise. But with the 750, as you can see here, it does give you plenty of cooling options. Lots of room. So let us know when you're watching this. Uh, we've kind of gone through some of the cases that we have here. Let us know which one is your pick for your next build in the comments. Moving on. All right, so now we're moving out of or maybe into the cases, depending on your perspective. And let's talk about cooling. So AIO cooling, AKA all-in-one liquid cooling, is all the rage because you can get liquid cooling at a much more affordable price point. It's a lot more easy to install and upkeep. And I know that Thermaltake is showing off some new all-in-one. So let's take a look at what we've got. So we've definitely been doing AIOs for a very long time. Yep. You know, case power cooling has been our thing here for Thermaltake. And with that, we've been expanding our line of AIOs. We've been doing 120s, 240s, 360 AIOs. And but no. now we're going up to the 420s Woo. and doing a triple 140 because we know that that radiator space is important for your cooling, especially yeah. with today's hardware. And then we've got some beautiful stuff over here. Can you walk us through some of these? And absolutely, yeah. So if an AIO thing is maybe something you want to get your feet wet, but you really want to dive in, we have cooling in a DIY type of aspect as well with custom distros for doing either hard tubing or soft tubing configurations yeah. where you include the CPU and or GPU into your custom cooling loop. Now, I will say, as much as I love to oogle at these beautiful custom cooling configurations here at CES, I myself have not done soft loop or hard loop on my own builds, but I know for some of you watching this, that is your thing. So I wanted to make sure that Mike is there for you guys as well. All right, let's keep going. Now, liquid cooling is all the rage, but believe it or not, there's some new, fun, exciting things in air cooling as well. You might be thinking fans, how exciting can that be? Fans with magnets, however, are very cool. So talk to me about the new magnetic connectivity that we have in air cooling. So these are our new SWA Fan EX fans that they magically, magnetically connect up. Now we're gonna be offering these in a three pack, but you're gonna get six blades so that you can actually reverse these yep. and swap them out. This actually offers a lot more uh, options for people that are looking for being able to do push-pull configuration. Yep. You want the intake, but you want the look of the RGB. We think that's huge for you. And not only being able to connect the fans up together like this, you also have just a single cable that will then just magnetically connect right there onto the fan, making it even easier for you guys to get your RGB. I love it so much. And speaking of easier for everyone, with these magnets, you cannot connect them the wrong way. It won't let you, right? Yeah, you know, in, in a silly way is how magnets work. Yep. It's also a nice preventative way to not do it wrong. So it kind of <laughs> gives us a two for one there on it and a nice fun little adventure putting your cooling together. Super cool, and the SWA fans uh, are RGB as well, yes? Absolutely, so these are gonna be tied into our entire RGB ecosystem. These are gonna work with our fans, our blocks, and everything all from one software. Love it. Now DDR5 RAM is all the rage here at CES 2023, but Thermal Tags has quite some panache. I was gonna say pizzazz, but I think panache is even a better word for it as far as the aesthetic goes. So if you want an aesthetically pleasing stick of RAM or multiple sticks of RAM, of course, this could be a way to go. So I love the paint and the color options we have here. You've got some RGB accents on top. This feels like the luxury line, Mike. These are definitely some nice classy modules here for you. This is our uh, basically what we did when we first launched our Tough RAM. And then of course, bringing this into a DDR5 option with our first version, our first gen memory, and then taking it up even a step further with our new XGD5. Now this is a classy module right here. We already have some of these uh, modules out in the market now. Cool. But we are gonna be expanding and offering up to 66 mega transfers per second modules coming soon in a 32 gig kit. Music to my ears. The often under, uh, uh, undervalued, underappreciated part of a, uh, any PC build is the PSU. I talk about this all the time. Without any power, it doesn't even matter what other components are in your PC. And if you have a poor power supply, even if you paid for all the fanciest components, you're not gonna get the max performance out of them, you're not gonna get the full lifespan out of them. 
So let's talk the underappreciated PSU, although Thermaltake makes a lot to appreciate. Matt, I mean, of course, power is a big thing for us here at Thermaltake. We kicked off as one of the first ATX 3.0 certified power supplies with the Gen 5 connector that everyone's talking about with all the new 40 series. And now we have our SFX. This is our 850 watt going up to 1,000 watts for this. And this is a 3.0 unit with the Gen 5 connector. That's it's amazing. <laughs> It's this big. <laughs> so you want to build small and you want a 40 series card in it? This is your baby. And also, I know with the, uh, I mean, we're not holding up all of Thermal Takes PSUs that they're showcasing here at the show, but for a lot of people who are, like myself, a little hesitant to build with a 40 series card because you may have heard about melting issues, there are ways around that, and that's to get a proper PSU. So Thermal Take has some really nice options coming out. Now, are they out on the market now or coming out soon? We definitely already have our gold units out. As you can see behind us here, we have platinum, even titanium efficiency stuff coming as well in an ATX 3.0 option with a variety of wattages to support all the cards. It's not necessarily about the 4090 sure. as much as it is about the 4070 Ti that just came out. There it is. It could be about that. And just to kind of really break it down for folks that are thinking, what should I be looking for in a PSU if I do want to do a build with a 40 series, maybe a 4090? What should they be looking for? Wooji with a 4090, NVIDIA recommends you want to keep probably around 1,000 watts. You also want to keep that idea too is where, how much is your CPU taking, the whole system. It's yeah. not just about the card as always. So make sure you do a little bit of research before you buy. Yep. Honestly, one of my favorite parts about CES is reconnecting with people that I haven't seen maybe since the last tech convention, and especially with things being from home or kind of hybrid the last couple years. Mike, it's just so nice to see you. Thank you for being in a video on my channel. <laughs> thank you for thank you for coming. I mean, I, I, we couldn't say how fantastic it is to be in an offline event, to have everybody coming in. It feels like a family reunion seeing all of our media friends come in to come check out our new stuff. Yes, and thank you for showing us all of the new shinies that Thermaltake has to offer. Folks, if you're watching this and you're planning a build or you're thinking about planning a build, let us know in the comments what is on your Thermaltake wish list. And, uh, you know, you can always hit up Mike or I on social media to ask any questions you might have. Mike, if people want to find you on social, where can they do that? Uh, all you got to do is just look me up at Thermal Mike just about anywhere. Awesome. All right, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Stay tuned for more CES coverage.